the gun collection. Been a while since I made a video. I figured I'd start the new year off, 2016, with one. Now, I used to do gun collection videos like once a year, but in 2013, 2014, my collection really didn't change a whole lot. I wasn't shooting a whole lot, and so I wasn't buying much really anyway. I had one or two here and there, but not a lot. But in 2015, I ended up in months of August and September, ended up buying like eight guns in that two month period. So basically like one a week, which is kind of a lot. Don't judge. It's not nice. So anyway, let's get started. Now, rather than you just say what the gun is, since most of these you've seen, I'll just kind of do a quick review on them or quick thoughts on them on each one. Smith & Wesson Model 10, 38 Special, 4 inch heavy barrel. Great little planker, you know, just uh, fixed sights. So, and plus it's kind of beat up as an old security guard gun, so it gets more scratches on it. Who cares? Great for letting beginners shoot, let them practice some. I thought I'm tending to like that over some autos because it's just, I guess, the mechanics of it. I don't know what the deal is. Smith & Wesson 586, 37 Magnum. It's a nickel finish. It's always great to have a 37 Magnum on hand. I think this is the second gun ever purchased. We have a Smith & Wesson 629, 44 Magnum. This is a, a dash one, so it doesn't have the uh, pin barrel recess cylinder, which those command a little bit higher price, but you can still get these uh, pre locks at, at a decent price here and there. Very nice. Now, if you notice, I run uh, Packmire grips on my revolvers, or I guess the heavier shooting revolvers. Really, on the Magnums, really, where you need to watch out for, like uh, I'd bought some of the open back strap ones. Pack Myers and I shot some 44 specials and then switched to all, all I could find was like the uh, super high velocity 44 mags and it wasn't a a pleasant little uh, you know setup there just from going from 44 special to those uh, high velocity 44 mags it wasn't very nice to hurt the fuck out of my hand so either I was just gripping it too hard and just instead of just kind of letting it recoil let it do its thing but anyway also, I was looking at like a uh, a model six uh, model twenty nine, which those uh, early models are very pricey. So, bus stands a little easier to take care of anyway. So, no big deal. Here is Rough Rider. Now, I wanted one with a four inch barrel, but at the time, this is the one that the only one that had the magnum cylinder, so I got it instead. Plus, it's just a little plinker anyway. I ain't like I'm out carrying it a whole lot anyway. Plus, you get a little more velocity out of it, so no big deal. Got the uh, Polish P64, 9 by 18 Makarov. This thing's kind of actually kind of snappy to shoot, and it's got probably the worst double action trigger pull ever. I mean, it's got to be the heaviest fucking thing I've ever shot for double action. I mean, it's got to be like 20 pounds. Single action ain't bad, but that double action is super freaking heavy. Got the Bulgarian Makarov. I think that was like a. Uh, Eight rounds versus the six in that P64. Very nice. I like, love the uh, bake like grips. Got all those three, all three of those surplus guns from Aim Surplus. And a Polish TTC or Tokarev, whatever you want to call it. TT33. You know, it's kind of got that 1911 look. It's, on the inside, it's totally different. So all the uh, hammer mechanism, all that comes out in one piece, stuff like that. But still, looking in the surplus guns, kind of a neat one to have. All right, got my car, CM9, basically a budget PM9. Great little front pocket carry gun, holds six rounds, nine millimeter. Very small for the size. Always good to have on hand. Nice little pocket gun. We have the. I call it a Jericho 941 versus the Baby Desert Eagle, what Magnum Research called it. But it's kind of a CZ-ish look. Always kind of, they always have kind of a tough look to them to me. But very slim for a double stack, or a, a double action double stack 9mm. Because it's an all steel gun, I actually, my best groups at our 9mm is this gun if I really concentrate. Very nice. A lot of people don't dig them, but really they ought to get into them. At least try one out anyway. Of course, I think now you can get them with the rails on and all that good shit anyway, if you're into that. HK USP 9mm. I had one of these before in all black, but I sold it. 
a few years back and because I needed to cover some bills but I ended up getting a good Christmas bonus to kind of defeat the purpose but it oh well I've always wanted a two-tone one anyway so I like the stainless and I pick up another one of course this one's still an early one don't just say it has as she says HK USP versus just big USP in big letters I think it was a uh, some mid 90s gun I can't remember Meh. all right sig 226 nine millimeter one I'll never sell very very nice earlier West German model one of my favorites love love the single action trigger in this very cool gun I wouldn't mind picking up one of the uh, stainless elites one day but they are kind of pricey sometimes you can get them uh, used for a little bit cheaper but we'll see how that goes that's on the wish list Smith & Wesson 915 basically just a, a budget uh, 5904 I would take one of these 915s over a 910 because they really went cheap on like, anyway, like with like plastic mag release and some other stuff they really went cheap on and so these got, I think these got a little better lines anyway myself but the good thing about it is they uh, take any of the Smith & Wesson 59 series magazines the double stack 9mm of this era so any of the generations so it's kind of a nice thing to have I had one before it was kind of a surplus model it had uh, different color controls I'll get into that one in a little bit Ooh, I scratched my Glock. Oh my God, life goes on. This is a uh, first generation Breda 92. See, it has the uh, frame mounted safety. Now, I consider this kind of a second part of the first gen because this one does not have the uh, step slide because the first uh, first run did for whatever reason they did. But still very cool. I think it was made in like 79, 78, I think. So pretty good shape and. Kind of a funny thing was it was a uh, had a starting bid of like four hundred bucks a bot now of seven hundred. I placed the bid on it, didn't think I was gonna get it, and nobody else bid on the damn thing. I knew the guys at the online store or whatever pawn shop, wherever it was on gun brokers, I knew they were kinda of pissed. They thought I'd probably go a little more than that. But the thing is those bread nine two S's have been important so many of those, so not really people are there's just a flood of those, so these uh kind of original models kind of suffer for that like just like this one this was not a one of the uh, police import models you don't see the PW arms marked on there this one came with the original box and it started out like a, the bidding at like uh, 550 bucks and kept getting relisted and relisted until it finally got down to like 450s which is when I bought it this is Breda 92S and it, it came from the factory with wood grips which even had that marked on the box but they were plain and kind of fat and not checkered so I ended up getting these from lock grips LOK making for the 92s for that little heel uh, or I'll say heel cup aside uh, magazine release on one missing out of my collection is the 92 SB which hopefully I'll find one one day also I shoot that this uh, S model a little better than the first gen 92 for whatever reason but that's what it goes and then we have the uh, 92 FS inox or inox stainless model where it's an early like a made in 93 I think early Italian model a lot of people prefer these because it has all full stainless controls versus all the black shit of course you don't see none of that uh, frame warren, slanted dust cover, retract slide, see if loaded, bullshit they put on some of the new ones now make them look fucking ugly so very nice and uh, they got billboard all over the damn thing that's one of the guns people always ask to buy Gen 2 Glock 19. I got this from uh, AM Surplus as well. I bought it. Uh, I think it was one of my September guns I bought. You know, I added a few little things to it. You see the uh, mag release, extended slide release, things like that. And it came with a New York trigger, which was very weird because of the way the reset is. Because it's not like a spring attaches that that trigger bar, and so it's not a very positive reset. It's kind of very slacky. It, it's hard to describe it. I just wasn't a fan of it, so end up swapping the uh, four and a half pound stuff out of my 41 into it and then the local gun shop uh, installed that uh, Zex stuff or whatever you call it Zev trigger kit yeah ZV I'll get into that 41 in a minute alright we got the Glock 26 good thing about it it'll take any of the uh, larger uh, model 9mm magazines the 19 and 17 of course 33 rounders as well which look kind of ridiculous on this gun Got a little pierce extension 
but an hostile carry gun as well. Not kind of big for pocket carry, but for inside the waistband, it won't print as bad anyway because the shorter butt on it, and everything like that. All right, Up to the high power snow. It's a silver chrome or hard chrome. It's a factory hard chrome, uh, burning high power or. And of course, you see it's black controlled, but has that gold trigger. Which they started uh, doing these silver chrome models in the early 80s, and they always had that freaking gold trigger for whatever reason. I don't know what the reason was behind it, but they've continued to do that. Which I don't know if they make this model anymore or not. And if you want to try to find a standard Mark III, which they sell for like I think eight hundred, eight or nine hundred bucks retail, which is ridiculous. But it originally came with some wraparound Pacmire grips, and I putting some surplus. Uh, F finger grips which were brand new just the basic checkered style ones which look good on it triggers the one thing I would change on it and also you notice it has fixed sights which most of these uh, silver chrome would usually have adjustable sights we have a uh, this is my first gun I ever purchased it's a captain's model don't shoot this one much because it's got the blued finish and also because it's got the tangent sight kind of the old school back when they had slotted which this one doesn't have but Oh well. Even though it's got that sentimentality of being the first gun I ever purchased, I would probably sell it before I sold my Mark III because it was my third gun I ever purchased and this one I shoot more and everything like that. Got more rounds through it. More trigger time. Mark III got the basic matte black finish. My favorites. Never sell this one or be one of the last ones I'd sell if I had to anyway. It's actually an FN marked high power made in the early, so it actually does have the uh, forged frame where they switched to the uh, making them in the 40 cal and they had to go to cast frames. I think it was cast frame and slide, I think that's how it went. So this is a uh, forged made in the late 80s. It was, made, it was imported by uh, CDI sales or coal distributing, which import a lot of Israeli stuff, which I think that's what it came out of Israeli police or Israeli security. Something like that. Wouldn't mind maybe getting this refinished in uh, hard chrome, maybe like a matte hard chrome on the frame and then brush flats uh, on the slide. Make it look kind of nice. New sights and trigger job, extend the safety, pimp it out some. We'll see. It's an FEG high power clone. I actually picked this one up just after uh, I got that uh, FN model. Got it for like 250 bucks. Uh, nobody really uh, was listed on arms list, and nobody really wanted it. He ended up he started out like 300 bucks, which is a good price, and slowly dropped down to like 250 and ended up getting it. So, and it came with like some hoe grips, but ended up swapping in some uh, these little cheap plastic grips. Make it look a bit better anyway. Decent little shooter though, even though it's got a little nicer finish, but the actual fit isn't as good as what I consider compared to the other ones. That's just me. You see I have two Star Model Super B's 9mm. This was a, a hand select versus this one. Now I actually bought this one for a buddy of mine but I was it seemed to have function issues on it and do not matter which magazine we used and I even put a new recoil spring in it thinking maybe that would help it. Still didn't do it. It just would uh, generally fair, fail to eject on the second round and just have little problems with that. Like it'd run one magazine, then try it again. It just couldn't seem to get it worked out. So I ended up giving them my surplus 915 that I had and got this one back from which that one was reliable. So a little better gift to give them someone that jams up after the first round. And this is the hand select one I select got for myself. And any function issues with it, I even placed the recoil spring, didn't have any problems out of it. And even before that, for, even before I placed the spring, no problems. A little, Near as beat up. You can see I got wood grips on both of them. They get a company called Robertson Trading Post. They buy a lot of like old stock from companies that are closing up. And someone had these uh, Super B grips. So I bought two sets. And they also sell like the Triple K, uh, the after, only aftermarket magazines you can find for those Super Bs right here. And uh, so I don't know if they have them currently, but they get them in every once in a while. So I end up finding those grips a little better than the old beat up plastic grips. And I even bought a couple of Triple K magazine, which did not help on that gun. So, who the hell knows? Colt Challenger, basically a, a budget model uh, Colt. Doesn't have the adjustable sights or anything like that. This is technically my dad's gun. My granny gave it to my dad 
who later gave it back to her when she moved into my her mother's old house and she wanted something a little bigger than this 22 so I gave her my Bread 92F and she and she gave me this so I guess she caught my dad's really however that goes when I get my Bread back Glock 41 I was really looking maybe just getting a regular 21 but this one's got a little bit thinner slide got a longer barrel got a better look kind of a little a little, little more look to it as well. And as I was saying about that uh, Zek or Zev trigger kit, and I had a local shop install that. And the first time I took it out with that trigger set, I was getting night primer strikes on two different types of ammo. I think it was a Gila and what's that Hungarian ammo? It's got a red box. The name escapes me right now. I was getting light primer strikes on both, both sets of ammo. So I ended up putting the factory firing pin spring back in it and took it out again and seem to be good so we'll just have to keep an eye on it see how it goes all right now we have this they call it a colt but it's actually made by walther they just they probably just pay colt a license to use their name a little 22 it doesn't take the it has their own proprietary magazine so don't take the uh conversion magazines it's the way the grip is it's a little different on the inside of it. it's a little if I can take it out you can see right there see how that is much shorter. Ooh, I'm banging my Glock up again. Just banging my Glocks all up. Who cares? This is my uh, Springfield 38 Super. It's customized by the previous owner. Front strap checkering, uh, beaver tail, magwell, all that kind of good stuff. Some of the internals as well. Along with the safety and slide release. Ended up getting it for like 500 bucks. So, what I modified, I just uh, got a little deal for me, I think. This is the stock one. This one, how this one, the other one would have looked whenever it was from the factory. I modified. When I get one, I want to get just a stock one. Plus, with the angle robot, if it gets banged around some, no big deal. Very basic. Plus, they don't make them in 38 Super anymore. Springfield doesn't, and so they kind of command a little better price, a little higher price than what you you would think, really. Of course, you find one in nickel, they really command a high price. Those are really hard to get. Which got the uh, Colt Custom and 38 Super. One everyone always tries to buy from me as well. Great shooter. Now the second to last time I took this thing out, I was having like uh, feeding issues, and I was using new uh, Arms Corps ammo that I bought. I had bought a case of because it, it was a good price, and and with my metal four magazines, it just wasn't feeding right. Of course, I had one. Just happened to have one Metgar magazine, which was I had bought brand new. The metaforms that came used with a rock line that I had, and the Met, the Metgar magazine worked fine with that ammo, so it was just one of those annoying things. And it's kind of one of those things that happen when you get used magazines with a gun, you really don't know the history of them, and that kind of thing. It may just been a may work fine with other ammo, or been one of those things, just freak things, I guess. We'll have to see though. But I ended up buying some more metaform Mac, um, Metgar magazine, sorry, and it seemed to be fine the last trip that I, range trip that I took out, so I have to keep an eye on it though. Because before that, I was just a uh, never had any issues out of that one. It's another uh, Colt 38 Super enhanced model before the XSC line, so it doesn't have the uh, front strap uh, serration, which I'm not a big di uh, fan of. I did change the duck bill safety and put a uh, drop in Wilson safety. I would like to find one of these enhanced models in commander length and stainless in 38 Super, but they're hard to find. But we'll eventually. We have the uh, Colt Combat Government. You see there, and uh, they made this is a Series 70 model. They made them at the end of the Series 70 line back in like '83, I think it was. Had a little different feature. Had the you know medium trigger, something better than the GI sights, and it came with the factory wrap around pack my grips, but it had front uh, line serrations, which were covered up by the grips for whatever reason. But who knows? And also had the flat mainspring housing as well. And they also did these in the uh, Series A line, but they had more or less the Series 80 markings, which looked kind of like that, just a Mark IV. And they ended up discontinuing the combat government and just making the combat elite. So I kind of like the uh, old school style markings. So I ended up getting this one. I was wanted one. All right. I already at 20 minutes. Okay. This is the uh, World War II reproduction Colt. They they made these back in like 2002, 2003, but they actually didn't sell that well. And they end up, I don't think they even did the full run of them. 
We can see it has the, uh, see where it did kind of a, I think it's right there where the, uh, it kind of got a little bit of them, but they, but they were finishing the slide. They didn't do it quite that good of a job on it. I don't think right there, but she's got the different markings. The old school markings on it. But very neat. Very hard to find these days. Get in front of the light. It's a Ruger SR1911 Commander Length. Got a lot of little enhanced features on it. Beaver tail, extended safety. Of course, it does have a lot of MIM stuff as well. Still a nice little, little shooter though for a Commander. Carries a little bit better than the uh, full size. 45 ACP as well. On that combat government, it's 45 ACP, if I forgot to mention. This is a Springfield mil spec. Had this one for a number of years. Done a lot of stuff like I changed the trigger out, put a different. Uh, we're about to drop that bitch. And uh, changed the hammer out and sear and stuff like that from cylinder and slide. But had it for a number of years. One I'll probably keep for forever, most likely. And you can see my less bear here. You can see it does not have any grips or grip bushings, which I really don't want to get into on this video because I'm already over at 20 minutes just on the handguns and I still got long guns to do. So I'll do that on another video. But most likely, you can see, look here, you can see a lot of my uh, finish is gone. And this thing came with, uh, I'll go ahead and go into it. It came with slim bushings or slim grips, which have a little shorter than uh, regular uh, grip bushings on it. You can put regular grips on it, but they don't get enough uh, threads on them. So I ended up taking those off, and one of them, and it just, I don't even want to get, get into it. It's just, it, it's getting way too long anyway. So I'm going to get into the long guns. I'll do another video on that later. Too much to explain. All right, on to long guns. My AR-15s, these have not changed really since you saw them last. I just like what I like and stick to it. Basic M4 style with all the good stuff on it. You know, I do plan on picking up a an Aimpoint Pro. Probably that's probably the next purchase I plan on making as far as gun stuff goes. Got just the uh, Dan Defense carbine 16 inch barrel. You know, some Magpul stuff. I do plan on I think I'm get one of those uh, what are they call Bravo mod stocks or whatever the hell they are. Maybe pick up one of those. Who knows? Pretty basic though. Got the uh, bit length gas system on this one, lightweight barrel. Now this one did come with like a, I think it was R Guns bolt carrier group. It was like a nickel boron. I could never get it to work right. Ended up switching just to a sw uh, spike bolt. Be done with it. Has like the uh, foliage green furniture on it. Like maybe put pick up like a micro dot for it. Keep kind of trying to keep it lightweight maybe. Eventually. Full length 20 inch barrel. It's an FN barrel I think. It's got just a carry handle sight on it for the time being. Fixed butt stock, more or less the M4A2, or what do you call it? No, M16A4, I should say. I'm totally fucked up on the numbers. Yeah, the A4 or an A2 model. Or AR15A4, however you want to call it. M16A1 clone. Oh, it's cool to have a retro. 20 inch pencil bear, it actually is a 1 12 twist. Very old school. Now, I originally planned on making this into an XM 177E2, which had like the the uh, very long. It's kind of a, a flash suppressor, but it actually had uh, uh, was actually somewhat of a suppressor as well. But it only you know muffled it slightly, so it really wasn't worth it. They make copies of it, just replica copies, which don't suppress the sound at all or anything. But very basic, more like a 653 clone. You watch uh, Platoon. That's what they used. But now, get on the rest of them. My AKs. Everyone knows this one. The Polytech. AKS. Which stands for AK Semi. But AK 47. 7.62 by 39. Let's go with a little Russian bake light on it. Big light magazine. Waffenworks. AK 74. Got the plum. One with a plum uh, magazine. Of course, we got the little, uh, well, the M92 PAP pistol. Now, I had a certain setup I was planning on doing with this, which 
what I thought was going to happen happened, which I figured as much. Most people know what the hell I'm talking about with that, but even I could still technically set it up like it was, but just one of those things I'll probably just, maybe just put a muzzle brake on it or flash pressure on it and just be done with it and leave it as is. Just shoot with a sling. But anyway, on the rest of them. All right, the Rugers. Ruger 1022 takedown. Neat little gun to have. Mini 14. Still a trucking. First rifle ever bought. Another 1022 with a basic wood stock. Need to get a different red dot. I think that one's broke. So he did much good now. Of course, I got the takedown now anyway. So you need to pick up actually a uh, small little micro, cheap micro. Rush that big ass damn thing. My dad had put that on there. But I'll get on with the rest of them. The heavy hitters, the Marlin 1895, 4570. Love that stock. One needs a good lever gun. Got the Mosin, pretty basic. Got the M1A, 7.62 by 51, or you could say. 7.62 millimeter full metal jacket. Everyone knows what that's from. If you have it, you need to go watch the movie Full Metal Jacket. I do have the original wood stock. This is a it's a loaded model. But this one came that, that stock came with it, so I just kinda like the looks of it. Just kept it on there. I've got the uh, good old L1A1. It's kind of just a a, a mismatch of parts of like uh British uh, British L1A1 and it's got the like, M-Bell FAL stuff mixed in there with it but alright now let's get on to the shotguns I had one odd rifle out my little CX-4 Beretta which takes the uh, Beretta 92 mag so kinda makes it nice Take 20 rounders, 30 rounders or the standard 15 rounders Two 870s, both police magnums, 18 inch barrel with a two shot extension. This was a 20 inch barrel, which I have an extension, but I just ended up taking it off and left it like I had it. Like I originally had it when I bought it. Very nice blue and wood. And then, prize, Benelli M1 Super 90. I call that my front axle because uh, I was saving to get one and I was changing the oil on my, uh, my truck I had. I, 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 I've sold it since then, but uh, I noticed around the front axle it was leaking, so I took it to a shop. They looked at it and said it's going to be replaced, the whole front axle. So there went the Benelli money, and so I ended up having to save up and get one later. So finally got one. But anyway, that's it for my collection. So you added a few, but most of them stayed the same. And so anyway, if y'all want to, you know, got any questions or want to see any close ups, any of these, just let me know. See y'all later. Thanks.